Molly Davis and Hannah Stolten will be in here next. All right, well, obviously, um, you know, a fun environment, I'm sure, on Thursday night. Uh, I think we'll have a great crowd. I hope we will. It's on ESPN, and that usually um, means that it's supposed to be an important game, right, if it's on ESPN. So, obviously, Maryland, a tremendous basketball team. Um, you know, Diamond Miller is one of the most talented um, wing forward players in our league. Uh, so capable of rebounding, getting to the basket, posting up. Um, she's just incredibly gifted athlete and probably a first round draft pick this year. Uh, Cheyenne Sellers, their point guard, is excellent as well. Um, again, she's just one of those kind of do-it-all, really talented players. And um, Abby Myers was a really great get for them. She's a transfer from Princeton and is shooting the three ball really well. Uh, they have two transfers in their starting lineup, um, also one from UCF. So they've done a good job with the portal of using that. But, you know, a team that's coming in very confident. They've had five straight wins now. Um, they have almost four people in double figures, so they're hard to guard. Um, and uh, we know that this is uh, another, you know, we're playing in a lot of big games. Every game seems to be like it's a big game for us. So here we are. Let's get used to it. Can you take anything from last year's game since they're so different? And yeah, not really. Uh, I just know, like, we know, like, how Brenda likes to play defense, and that doesn't really change year to year. Um, and so it's just, you know, the, the, the same scheme with different characters. And, uh, again, the main characters were there last year in Diamond Millers and Sellers, um, you know, but did a really good job for them last year as well. What, how does she like to play defense? Um, player to player, front the post, switch every screen, press three quarters. Um, so that's kind of what we're preparing for. Are you kind of surprised? Ne maybe not necessarily surprised, but I mean, they're 18 and four. Mm -hmm. I believe their top five scores from last year aren't. They're not on the team this year. So you're just kind of surprised that you know the, the transfers they brought in, and you know some sellers last year wasn't you know necessarily a huge piece for them. Um, are you just kind of surprised that maybe it's all gelled together, and you know they're 18 and four? Yeah, um, you know, Brenda's obviously a good coach. Um, Maryland is, does a great job with the transfer portal and getting kids in. I mean, you have a kid from UCF, a kid from tra um, Princeton. Uh, Briggs is also a transfer from Utah. Um, so they're, you know, they're, they do a great job of attracting kids from the portal, really talented kids that have experience. So it's not like they're building this with freshmen learning a system. These are players that are, you know, players that have played um, at the highest level for four years and are coming in here for one year. But I think Diamond Miller, again, is, is so talented. And uh, she was there, obviously, last year. Um, so it, it's, it's a different team, but it's also the same key parts with, with Sellers and Miller. What kind of update do you have on Kenna? I don't have an update yet. I wish I did. We have practice today. Uh, she hasn't practiced yet. Um, so. You know, I really don't know what tomorrow holds. Um, I hope I know a little bit more after I get to practice today, but um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, if she'll be able to play or if she'll, what percentage that she will be if she does play. They doubled um, Caitlin last year. Do you expect something like that this year? Yeah, they like to trap off their ball screens, and so um, we're fully expecting that again. You mentioned it. That <clears throat> You've had a lot of these, it seems like the last few years, these big games. You know, part of the reason the Big Ten being what it is, and, and you guys, how do you feel this team and, you know, the veteran pieces on it handle those, you know, enjoy them for what they are in the moment, and then kind of, you know, move on knowing that, you know, it's a long season and there's a lot mm -hmm. bigger opportunities ahead? Yeah, I think when you have a veteran team, they're really able to handle a lot of those type of situations, pressure situations a little bit better. And we've been in some big games. I mean, the, the game at Michigan was a big game. The game at Ohio State was a big game. So we've been in some big games. I mean, the UConn game was a big game. Um, so I think the more times you're in these type of situations, it prepares you and you're ready for it the next time even more so. So I think it has helped us. You got Maryland twice, right, and, and Indiana twice yet. How important is it to hold serve at home? Yeah, I think it's very important. Um, 
because we know how hard it is to win on the road in the conference. Um, so, yeah, these games at home are very, very important in our game against Indiana is the very last game of the year. You've had a, a couple of scoring lapses in the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks, and, and I mean, you were able to, to win the game still and you know, overcome those, but is there anything that either you find concerning or anything you feel like you can learn from and apply to, to kind of smooth those over? When they yeah. Come? You know, and even though we've had some scoring lapses, um, we're like periods maybe where we don't score. It's funny, I think in our wins and losses, we score about the same amount of points. And so it's not like our lack of offense is really, you know, in those lapses. It's kind of like we make up for it <laughs> at some other time in the game. It almost appears, you know, like we may go a couple of minutes without a, without a basket, but we did so well on the other parts that it kind of covers up for it. You look at the competitiveness of the Big Ten, and it's pretty obvious. I mean, this team, you know, Ohio State was second in the country and undefeated, and then you beat them, and then two other teams beat them, and now they're, you know, kind of reeling. Is that kind of show? I don't remember it being this deep, yeah. you know, this top heavy. I mean, as far as league level competition, I mean, is this is this league as good as it's been? I mean, it appears to be that way. Uh, you have to say that because I mean, when you have five teams in the top twenty-five. Um, you know, you have to consider this the best that it's ever been. What would you say is <clears throat> maybe the one or two keys tomorrow night for the, if you guys do those two things well, you would be able to win? Yeah, I think we really need to handle the ball, value the ball. I mean, they're really good. They're one of the best at turning people over in the conference. They average, you know, over 20 turnovers a game, and they only turn the ball over less than 13 times. So, you know, valuing the ball against their press and against their pressure defense and not letting it rattle you, um, I think that's important. Um, I think transition defense is really important. They're good in transition. That's 26% of their offense comes out of transition. Um, so they do a nice job of pushing the ball. It's been kind of this last stretch. There's been a lot of teams that, you know, pressure on, on defense, press. How would you say you guys have handled that, and especially going when you have another team tomorrow night that's going to do the same stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think for the most part we've done a decent job with it. Um, I think that, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, you're always room for improvement, right? I mean, that's how we always feel. But it seems like this conference is becoming more pressing conference than it used to be. It didn't really used to be that way. It used to always be kind of Rutgers, and that was it. Uh, and now we're seeing it from a lot of different people. And I think that almost helps you so you're not, it's not so shocking when it does happen because it's happening, you know, more and more within our conference, but I think we've done a fairly good job with it. You've been rebounding well lately. Why? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, why have we been rebounding well? I mean, it's, it's something that, you know, we've always stressed and it always kind of was perplexing to me when we didn't rebound well. Um, but, you know, I think Hannah certainly helps us in that area a bit. Um, I think Caitlin is one of the best rebounding guards in the country. Um, she just has a way to get the ball in her hands on defensive rebounds. Um, so I've been, you know, I think also teams are sometimes worried about our transition offense because it is so good and they don't attack the O boards as well. Is Caitlin's rebounding is it more effort or is it just she knows where the ball is going? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, she knows she wants the ball in her hands and so she's just got it figured out when that ball goes up. Um, you know, she, go, she finds a way to get it. Um, you know, really, she's probably the best rebounding guard that we've had since Kashin Alexander, and that's going back a ways. They've got a, a whole bunch of kids, like eight or nine, that, that shoot the three yeah. well. They um, shoot very well. So that, that poses its own sort of <laughs> issues, yeah. especially in terms of your zone defense has been pretty successful mm -hmm. recently. But, I mean, is that even going to be a legitimate defense against a team like that? I mean, I think you have to try everything because, you know, sometimes a zone you match up better with the threes because, you know, you, you don't get, like, overloaded on one side or caught on screens as much or, you know, penetrate and kick. Um, so, you know, but 29% of their shots are threes. They shoot very well. They shoot 37% from three. So kind of look at your adjusted field goal percentage. That's 56%. Uh, you can't let them have too many of those. How would you assess this team's growth defensively? Um, you know, again, you know, you're, it's funny when people ask coaches questions about like, 
where do you see your team's strengths and things like that? You always go to your weaknesses, right? Because that's the way we're always built. Like, like, what can we get better at? And so I think our defense has improved, um, especially over, you know, since two years ago. Um, there's always room for improvement in my mind, um, but I think it has gotten better. All right, yeah. thank you. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Hannah, what, uh, <laughs> how you doing? Um, uh, so as a Wash, Washington kid, uh, what do you know about Brenda Fries, uh, her kind of legacy at Wash, and you know what, what she's done as a, as a player and coach? Um, I know a lot about her. Um, my mom played with her sister and her a little bit, I believe. Um, we've talked before uh, a few times during recruiting. Um, she, she was amazing. Um, she's a great coach. Um, she coaches a great basketball team, and we're excited to play them. Did they offer you or anything like that? I don't know. OK. Oh, yeah, you were, came real early. Yes, so. I came real early. Molly, the, uh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Maryland has a ton of, ton of players who can shoot the three. Yeah. What do you guys have to do on the perimeter to, to make sure it just doesn't go crazy? Yeah, I know. Um, they have a ton of great shooters, but we just got to know personnel, um, know who we can and can't help off of, and find them in, tra in transition to slow that three ball down. How hard is it to you know, go up and off against an offense? I know going through statistics, a lot of those players, you know, they don't shoot a ton of threes, but they shoot it at a high, a high enough level that you have to be aware of them. How hard is it to go up against an offense where you know, maybe it's not someone shooting six of the game, but you have to know that if they shoot three, they're probably going to make two of them? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what makes them so good. Um, but like I said, it comes down to personnel. Um, I think that's something that we've stressed these past few games even. Um, so we know that they're a really tough team. Um, we're going to get their best shot. Um, but, you know, it just comes down to knowing personnel. Dan, yeah, no, I wanted to ask, I, the other day I saw uh, Robert Gallery in Northers. Uh, what's the relationship there? Uh, I, I'm, forgive me if you, everybody else knows and I don't. Um, we, we just met, um, <laughs> and he was wearing my jersey, um, which was really cool. Um, a Hall of Famer wearing my jersey. Um, he came up to me after the game, and we talked for a little bit. Um, he's a really cool guy, and it was um, awesome to see him wearing my jersey. Yeah, I didn't know if you were if you related or if you had any, you know, if he knew your family or something. Or? Just a fan. <laughs> Molly, this is your first season kind of going through the Big Ten, and, yep. you know, there's – you know, you guys have several of these big games or, or games against, you know, highly ranked opponents, and obviously you guys are up there too. What has it been like for you in, like, kind of digesting one of these at a time, um, knowing that, you know, it's big, but then when it's over you kind of got to put it aside and move on to the next one? Yeah, I mean, I think I have a little bit of experience just playing college basketball for the past three years. Um, so I had some conference games, obviously, not to this level. Um, but, you know, just taking it step by step. And I feel like every day I learn something new. Um, and so just kind of understanding. I mean, my teammates have been great helping me out and trying to adjust because um, it's obviously a different level of play. Um, but overall, I think I'm, you know, taking it step by step and learning something every day. What, what's it like kind of going through being on a good team that's, you know, trying to get to the NCAA tournament and do good things from a mid-major point of view where, you know, you, it's probably all going to come down to the conference tournament versus – you know, the situation here and here, how do those kind of similar and different? Yeah, I mean, it's one game at a time. Um, try not to look too far ahead, uh, especially in the MAC. I mean, it's, it's also one game at a time. Um, you know that you gotta kind of got to win that conference tournament to get into the NCAA tournament. Um, and then obviously coming here, like you said, I mean, you don't necessarily have to win the conference tournament um, just to get into the NCAA tournament. But, I mean, it's a step-by-step, -step, um, just kind of taking it one game at a time, not looking too far ahead. What do you guys think of Diamond Miller and the problems she presents? Uh, she's a big problem. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we like I said before, we got to know personnel and who we can and can't help off of um, and provide some help um, on her. Because it's going to be a total team effort on her. And I guess this is your first time, obviously, going through the Big Ten, too. What's it been like to, you know, kind of have a lot of these games 
that are you know highly ranked, a lot of hype about them. I mean, you guys obviously have some more coming up. What's it kind of been like to have? It seems like you know one kind of right after another. Um, I'd say it was stressful the first time. Um, since I hadn't been in any situations like that before. You know, we play AAU, but this stage is unlike anything else. Um, so every game it gets a little less stressful. Um, my teammates really helped me out with being confident and um, staying ready and, yeah, <laughs> getting better every game. Do you ever just look back and think, this time last year I was playing against Hampstead or, or Wallen or <laughs> Prairie or something like that? Yes. Um, I think about that all the time. It's crazy to think that um, just last year I was in high school wearing blue and white, and now I'm here with the Hawks, and it's really cool. When you look at um, you know, Patrick Caffrey had a very public and open dialogue regarding anxiety, and it's something that everybody experienced, or most people experienced, but at, at this level, you mentioned the stress of this, um, how, do you, how do you cope um, shooting slumps, both of you, uh, how do you cope with shooting slumps, how do you cope with uh, not letting anxiety or other um, potential mental situations get the best of you when you know maybe things are starting to stack up because you've got a lot of things on your plate as human beings? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I think it for me personally, something that's helped me is getting into a routine. Um, and coach always stresses, like, do what you need to do to be able to prepare and get ready for whatever game, whatever practice. Um, and so just understanding what you personally need to do to mentally, physically prepare yourself um, is something that's really helped me. Yeah, I would agree. Um, just staying mentally positive, um, focusing on um, this is what I love and this is what I love to do, just trying to stay happy and be where my feet are. Have they made you watch last year, tape of last year's game at all? Have you seen tape of last year's game? Versus Maryland? Versus Maryland. Uh-uh. Oh. No. <laughs> Neither of us were here. <laughs>